Welcome back students who are taking financial accounting and we are working on the series of videos for chapter 3, the exercises group B, the assigned problems in the digital study guide. And in this video we are working on at least uh, problem number 40. Let me get down to it here. All right. And um, you know, as always, if you don't understand something, go back and watch the theory videos. And if you're still not getting it, then feel free to, you know, telephone and speak with an instructor. But realize that accounting is about doing, okay? It's not about looking up. So, you know, if you read something and you don't understand it, you know, that's one thing. But you also have to do the problems in order to be able to, you know, grasp it, okay? All right, so... Uh, this problem here, it says the post-closing trial balance was repaired um, for photo finish, but some of the balances were entered in the wrong column. Prepare a corrected post-closing trial balance. Assume all accounts have normal balances and the amounts are correct. So basically, oh, wrong slide, there we go. So basically, um, uh, what we have here is we have amounts are in the uh, incorrect columns. Okay, so I'm not going to reproduce the entire post-closing trial balance. What I will do here is, is I will go down through here and show the corrections and just do the math. So, you know, cash, you know, we know that assets, you know, the normal balance are debits. So cash is in the right column. Accounts receivable is in the right column. But supplies and equipment are in the wrong column. These are debit amounts. So we should have 1700 on this side and 23000 on this side okay so that's wrong and of course accumulated depreciation is a contra account it's the opposite account to the equipment and so therefore with the equipment being a debit having a normal balance of a debit accumulated depreciation has uh, a credit for a normal balance so that 5000 belongs on this side instead okay liabilities the normal balance of a liability account is a credit. So for accounts payable, this 5,200 belongs on this side. The salary payable is on the right, is in the right column. Okay. And unearned service revenue is a liability account, even though it says revenue and go back and watch other videos as to why unearned service revenue is a revenue account. I'm sorry, is a, is a liability account. And since it's a liability, its normal balance should be a credit. So this 3000 belongs on the credit column and not the debit column. Okay, for equity, common stock is 15000 um, Equity accounts have a credit balance. Um, a normal balance is a credit balance. So the common stock, the 15000 is on the right side. And this retained earnings, okay, um, For all intents and purposes, right now in your education, all we're con you know this particular problem, we're concerning ourselves with the normal balance of the retained earn earnings account. And since retained earnings is an equity account, and the normal balance of equity accounts are credits, this 15,250 should go in the credit column. All right. But like I said, this here is for all intents and purposes in your education right at this moment in time. Is it possible for retained earnings to have a debit balance? Yes. But the, the problem is saying, uh, is just talking about normal balances um, and, make, and the out, amounts being correct. So um, without making the problem overly difficult by assuming something um, that's beyond this level of education, all right, we're going to say that the retained earnings has a credit balance of 15250 And that brings me to just one quick subject here. For those who have accounting experience, um, bookkeeping or whatever have you, you know, stick to what is, um, you know, your level of knowledge may be greater than what you're, than what you're seeing at this moment in time in the book. Um, so it's sort of like um, earnings per share. And I like, I use this as an example. In earnings per share, the very simplistic calculation is earnings divided by shares. Okay, that's on. I mean, that's what earnings per share is. Okay, and that's on a simple level. 
but once you get through intermediate accounting, okay, the earnings per share uh, calculation is actually like three blackboards long. And obviously, if you're dealing with earnings per share in a subject like intro to business or financial accounting, at this moment in time anyway, um, you're going to have a, you know, an answer. Let's just call it AAA. Okay. But if you did it in intermediate accounting, you might have an answer BBB. You know, both are correct, all depending upon, you know, which one that you're, you know, which level of knowledge that you're dealing with. If you're in intro to business or in financial accounting, the expected answer is AAA, even though you might come up with BBB. So BBB would be wrong because it doesn't fit your level of education at this point in time. Now, if you're in intro to, uh, if you're in intermediate accounting, you know, your answer should be BBB. If you put AAA, okay, that's going to be wrong because it doesn't, it doesn't fit with the level of education that you're at. So um, I just thought I'd point that out that when you're doing problems, you know, uh, stick to what's in the book at the level of knowledge that you're working with at this moment in time. And, and I only point that out because, you know, an argument can be made that retained earnings could have a debit balance of 15250 but within the context of this problem, it should be a credit. Right? So um, we need to foot, foot these, and, uh, these columns. So 10,250 th uh, added to 13, uh, 13,200 plus 1,700 plus 23,000 gives us a footing of 48,150. And then we have to add up the credits, 5,000, 5,200, 4,700, 3,000, 15,000, and 15,250 should give us 48,150. Now, notice what I did. I added up the debits and came up with that number, the 48,000. I did not just automatically make that the footing for my credit. That's wrong if you do that, okay? You have to do the math for the credit column and come up with the same number. That's the double check. That's what double entry bookkeeping is about. Um, earlier today, I had a student saying, ah, I'm on my own adjusted trial balance. I've worked in accounts receivable before. You know, I understand this, but I can't, you know, my debits don't equal my credits. Well, you know, sure, she made a mistake, but realize that this is how you find out whether you've made mistakes or not. If she went and j just automatically added up the 48,150 and wrote it as 48,150 in the debit column without adding up the numbers for the credits, maybe her the mistake she made might have given her, say, an answer of 48,125, okay? And she wrote 48,150. That's called cooking the books, okay? And it's not acceptable, okay? Um, you lose your job for that. Um, so make sure you add up the credits because that allows the double check. And that's what double entry bookkeeping is about. If there's uh, enough checks and balances in the system where um, mistakes, you know, can be found. Okay. All right. So um, one more problem. Um, and it says here, uh, the following is the adjusted trial balance. Um, for January 31st. Journalize the closing entries at January 31st. Okay, so this is an adjusted trial balance. And remember, when we're working on our worksheet, we have our adjusted treat, uh, unadjusted, unadjusted trial balance, right? Meaning throughout the entire accounting period, we've had transactions and we posted those journal entries into our ledger accounts and we created an unadjusted trial balance. Then we look at those balances and we make adjustments to them. Okay. Once we've made those adjustments, we have an, we have an adjusted trial balance, which is what we have on this page here, right? From the adjusted trial balance, you know, assuming that you know, these are the balances that we say we want in order to be able to create our financial statements. If any of them are wrong, we have to go back and make uh, go back and make additional adjustments until we get the balances we want. Okay, and from the adjusted trial balance, that allows us to be able to calculate, you know, to create our income statement, 
our balance sheet, you know, and our statement of retained earnings. Once we have our financial statements, we have to make closing entries in order to uh, reduce our temporary accounts, which are revenues, expenses, and dividend accounts to balances of zero and move that information to our retained earnings account. All right. um, when After we've made the closing entries, then we can create a post-closing trial balance, all right, which would then only have our assets, liability, and equity accounts on it. Uh, the retained earnings would be uh, adjusted by our dividends, revenues, and expenses. Okay, so that's how you, that's in working across the worksheet. Now to solve and do this exercise, it's telling us to make the closing entries. Okay, so remember we have dividends revenues and then our expenses so generally we do our um, revenue accounts first so we have just one account service revenue for ninety six thousand four hundred right since that is a credit that means to reduce it to zero we have to debit it right so we're going to debit service revenue for the 96,400 and we credit our retained earnings account okay, for 96,400 for our expense accounts and you do them even though the you know the chart of accounts the a trial balance has dividends first then revenues and expenses you always you know work through the process of doing revenues first then all of your expenses second and then your dividends third. Um, just get used to doing them in that order, right? And the, for the reason why that dividends are not necessarily, you know, paid out. Okay. So, I'll, you know, if you do revenues and expenses first, you've just taken care of your income statement, which means you can create your statement of retained earnings. And on your statement of retained earnings, you have you're adding net income first. And then you're doing less dividends, okay, on your statement of retained earnings. So that's why you also follow the same process, be, you know, by doing the revenues, then the expenses, and then the uh, the dividends. So um, I'm going to close out these here expense accounts next, and their balances, their normal balances are debits. So that means we need to credit them. And if we're going to credit those balances, we're going to debit something else. So I debit my retained earnings, and now I'm going to credit um, the salary expense, credit rent expense, credit depreciation expense equipment, credit depreciation expense furniture and then credit supplies expense okay so our salary expense was 326 and rent is 14800 Depreciation equipment is 1550 uh, Depreciation for furniture was 730 And supplies expense was 480 So the total of all of those um, is 50460 which is our debit to our retained earnings. Right? Remember, debits have to equal credits. So, you know, I'm backing into this retained earnings amount by adding all of these up. When I add these up, that becomes my retained earnings. Okay, and then the last entry is um, we have a dividend for 20,000. So that's a debit, which means we credit something else. So if we credit something else, we're going to 
I mean, we're going to credit retained earnings. I'm sorry, we're going to credit dividends, but we debit the retained earnings. So our credit to dividends are $20,000. Okay, and so that is the entries we make, you know, our closing entries, which, you know, was, uh, you know, if you're looking at this and you um, uh, problem three dash uh, exercise three dash thirty eight b um, is the same. So if you need more um, more practice, go ahead and you know watch the video for three dash thirty eight b because we're making basically you know closing entries in that particular problem that exercise also. Okay, so those are our journal entries, and that's it for the exercises, and we'll start a new series of videos working with the problems in the next video. All right. See you then.